After months of all the attention being on the EXP, Evercade finally showed those of us with the original handheld console some love this month by releasing the final firmware update for it. In this video I'm going to show you how to install it on your Evercade and I'm going to go through some of the new features that it brings. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you how to install the firmware onto your Evercade. And unlike the VS or the EXP, the original handheld console doesn't have Wi-Fi. So installing firmware update onto it is a little bit more complicated than it is on those machines. You're going to need to start off by downloading a piece of software from Evercade's website and put that onto either a Mac or a PC. And then you need to connect this up using a USB cable. Okay, so let's start by downloading the updater. To get that, you need to head on over to evercade.co.uk forward slash Evercade hyphen handheld hyphen updates and I'll leave a link to that in the notes for this video below. Uh, at the time I'm making this video I've, there, there were versions for the Windows, Mac uh, and Linux is still flagged up as coming soon. Okay so we've got some instruction here on what we need to do. We need to download the updater and install it using the button below. Uh, we open the folder, run the Evercade, update to exe file, follow the on-screen instructions. Uh, that's then going to install a driver uh, and then we'll uh, then need to run the update itself and the console will automatically restart. Okay, so let's download the, update, uh, the installer now by clicking on the download button. And let's head on over to my downloads folder. And we need to extract that file from this zip file. So let's go uh, to my zip application and uh, unzip that here. Click on the exe file. And that brings up the firmware updater uh, software. So first thing we need to do is install the drivers for the Evercade. Click on the reinstall install drivers button. Okay, so at this point I need to connect up the Evercade uh, to my PC using a U micro USB cable. That just goes in the bottom here. And then plug that into my PC. And that should now start setting up the device on my Windows machine. saying that the driver is missing so presumably at this point you'll now start installing the device driver for the Evercade and then once that is that is done I think we then need to just click on the uh, restart update button so just wait for that driver to install I think that's probably done now okay so let's click on restart update and that's telling me I need to connect the Evercade, so I've done that. And then as the instruction said, uh, I need to hold the menu button while switching the Evercade on. And continue holding that as it comes on. Okay, so that now seems to be going through, checking the firmware. And it now looks like it started to run through and install the update on the Evercade itself. So we'll just let that run through to completion, at which point I think it should restart the console. Okay, so that's done. Let's see if it restarts. And indeed it does. And once that's restarted, we'll just go in and check the firmware version number to make sure that the update has installed uh, correctly and everything's okay. Okay, so let's just go into the menu, uh, go down to System, and as you can see, uh, we now have firmware version 3.0.0. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly head back to the Evercade website and click on the link for the change log to see what changes there are included in this latest update. 
Okay, so it just goes through there and says about the fact that the uh, original Hevercade handheld is now out of production. Uh, and they were late in delivering this latest update and it will be the last one. Uh, okay, so we've got the first thing we've got in there is a coin limiter and also the inclusion of some game statistics and dy changes to the dynamic rate control to assist with non standard refresh rates. Yeah, that looks interesting. Uh, so some changes there on refresh rates. There's some updates regarding performance and the game options can now be found uh, by clicking on an ellipsis menu. Uh, and some some bits here about making sure that uh, future cartridges work for a bit. So uh, you've got continued support in terms of those, those are expected to work for a little bit longer. Uh, there's the ellipsis menu again, coin limiter, there's a new competition mode, game statistics, uh, some stuff around refresh rate switching. Okay, and then we're now getting into various game cartridges, we've had updates, better game rendering, and there's oh, an overhaul to the Atari uh, 1 and 2 emulation. I suspect that's probably the console, not the arcade collections. Uh, some stuff there to do with the E664 collection. Yeah, so there's a whole load of just various uh, updates there. So let's start off by taking a look. I can get the Atari one cartridge out. Now this one has been upgraded already because I've had it on my Evercade VS so that has had the uh, the bit where it takes about 10 seconds when you first go into it to upgrade the emulation software on that cartridge. So we won't see that when I uh, go into the game on here. Um, okay, so first of all we've got a warning sign. Now I don't know whether that was on the original or the last version or whether this is something new, but there's just a warning there about photosensitivity. And then we've got this new ellipsis menu, so the three dots. Uh, we've got a competition mode here, so what does that do? Okay, so that sort of stops you from uh, having in-game saves and save states, so they're disabled in the menu by the look of it. Uh, oh yeah, and when you go into that you get like a, a little trophy up in the top left-hand corner there, and yeah, then when you go into the menus there you can see you can no longer save game states. Uh, we've got some game stats here, so time played, number of times you've played it, uh, load counts and save counts. Uh, I think at that point, from what I remember, uh, when I did this on my VS, there was a, when I first went into the first game, there was about 10 seconds as it upload, uh, updated the emulation software on the cartridge. So that's uh, both Atari Collection 1 and Collection 2, the console ones, not the arcade ones. And you can see there that I've been in played and play count's gone up. And I'd saved, done a save state, that's gone up. And those stats are per game by the look of it, it's not overall and it's not for the cartridge, it's it's individual uh, statistics for each game. Okay, so I'm now going to get one of the arcade collections and just see what changes are to that, if there are any more options on the menu. I think it said something about uh, limiting the number of coins you can use. So let's go into the ellipsis menu for this one. And there yeah, you can see there's a coin limit on there. So I can just update that from one coin. I think it goes up from one to 20 by the look of it. So I'll set that to five. And then we'll go into a game and see just how many coins I, it'll let me insert. So three, four, five. Yeah, and once I get to five, I can no longer insert any more coins. So. I'm, And you can see there again the game stats, so I've played it once. That's recorded on there. Competition mode again, same as it was before, it disables the ability to have save states. So again, got the trophy in the top left hand corner there, and as you can see when I go into the menu, uh, quick save, load, last save, and save and load options in there are disabled. 
Well, that's it for now. Uh, it was a bit of a quick one, but I just wanted to share my experiences of upgrading the firmware on my uh, original handheld Evercade because it's a bit more fiddly than it is on the VS or the EXP using uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, if you enjoyed it, then let me know by liking it with a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the bell icon so you'll get notified when I upload new content to the channel. But that's it for now. Wherever you are, stay safe, keep well. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Retro Now. Thank you.